started from the bottom, now we here. Court signs, you would think I was a Cleveland Cavalier. I'm talking 30,000 feet up in the air. And dance later, 30 minutes later, all the fans cheer, bitch. You ain't seen this power since the bomb. I went to Vegas for my 22nd, ran it out the palms. Now they say Illuminati is the car. Or maybe every one of y'all is lazy and I worked hard. I ain't never bowing down for a dollar. Selling my soul to a china. I won't even take a buck from my father. But they were saying that back in the day. When I was hustling tickets to my shows. As Dante and I heard Tepper sitting up like a fillet. Talking about they run my city when they living in that lake. Sucker, I ain't hearing nothing but a word. I talked about it, been about it, bitch. I got what I deserve. See, I don't know why everybody mad. You had your chance and you blew up me while I'm young. And I'm ruthless, meanwhile the dumb are influenced Thinking you live like the music, don't be foolish My shooters make your face maroon like the Hoosiers uh. Suckers always wanna talk funny Broke motherfuckers never wanna talk money And since I was being quiet in the past I'm on the top looking down, kiss my ass Still in the game with my same click Still with the hood, bitches, fuck Cambridge And when they wanna know if I am real I say, bitch, I ran my city for I ever had a deal Cows Bitch. Hey, what's up, everybody? RJ back with another video, and today we're doing the uh, the RJ show. I haven't done one of these in a while, but I have a guest with me. Uh, Rai, Rai, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm a huge Bulls fan, Cubby fan, Notre Dame fan, only for college football. I'm a huge wrestling fan. I'm a, I'm a huge collector. Um, I love going to sport events. I, you know, I made a couple of road trip videos recently when I went to Indiana with my, with my dad and his friends and all good stuff. You know, I have so much stuff to tell you, my friend, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. I'm a huge movie fan and all that good stuff. Okay, uh, how long have you been watching uh, pro wrestling? Oh my gosh, yeah, since the early 90s when my brother, my younger brother got me involved with it. When I saw Hogan versus Earthquake, that's my very first. Review, you know, my brother fell in love with the uh, product, and there was something I can't stop watching it, you know. Yeah, I understand. Uh, what's your favorite? Uh, I, don't, I don't want this all to be, you know, me asking you questions, but what's your uh, what's your favorite uh, era in wrestling? A lot of people like the attitude era. Is that your favorite? Oh, yeah, yep, I sure, yep, bingo. Okay, uh, who's your favorite wrestler? Uh, uh maybe Austin, Austin. Uh, HBK, Triple H, um, RVD, The Untigger. And etc. You know, there's so many athletes right there. You know. Yeah, I got you. Um, well, uh, wrestling has sure changed a lot since. I mean, you mean you've been watching wrestling for almost the same amount of time? I started watching when uh, Sensational Sherry was with Shawn Michaels. I remember watching back then. That's that's when I first really my first real memory of wrestling. Uh, so I've been watching since like around '91, somewhere around there. Uh, so, uh, I think you've been watching a little bit longer because you, you were watching the Hogan era. I wasn't, I didn't get to really watch all that live, but I did see, you know, videos and stuff, obviously, of all the stuff back then. It's not the same as actually watching it, you know, live, because people, you know, people compare, this is, you know, about basketball, people compare Jordan to, you know, people today. And the only way to really appreciate Michael Jordan, in my opinion, was to actually, you know, be around to watch him on the team of the Bulls every week, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, but so we have different perspectives on things before the '90s because we one lived it and one watched it. So it's a it's a little different there. But that's the that's the way things are. You know, that's just how it is. Uh, how uh, how are you liking the way uh, Monday Night Raw and WWE is uh, as a product today? Well, it's pretty good right now. It's the road to WrestleMania. Of course, it should be good. But after Mania, it's gonna go. Uh, normal. We all both know that, correct? Yeah. Um, I th the thing with me with WrestleMania this year, I think everything is very predictable. Um, I think the match that everyone knew was going to happen this year had to be a uh, uh, Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. I think we. I think almost everyone knew that that was you know so, uh, almost a guaranteed lock for WrestleMania this year. Um, do you think that the match card is too predictable? Yeah, for some reason it is for 29. It's kind of sad because next year, you know, it's the big anniversary, the 30th anniversary, but I don't, we don't want to discuss that. 29, it's so predictable. And that's what Pacetica is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, this is, this is what I see, uh, and this, this is what aggravates me as a fan. And I'm not going to WrestleMania this year. I do plan to go next year because it's 30, and there's always a chance someone like Stone Cold might show up or something, which gives me hope. But uh, to, to me, Undertaker and Punk, uh, well, we can talk about that a little more in a minute, but I don't see. I see obviously Taker winning that. 
I see Triple H beating Lesnar. I see Cena getting the title from Rock, setting up maybe a Rock Cena 3 for next year's WrestleMania. Um, and, and those are the three main matches, and I... And to me, I don't really, I'd be insanely shocked if anything besides those things happen in those matches. And uh, I think most wrestling fans agree with me on that. Yeah, I do agree. I'm not a big fan of Rock versus Punk. No, scratch it. Um, Rock versus John Cena on the two. Now, the first one is classic. There's this one in the last one. Now, the reason I bring number two because it's a title match. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, oh, whatever. But, I mean,. I, I think everyone knew when uh, Rock was coming in to get the title that it was going to be Rock Cena, you know. And at the Rumble, when Cena won the Rumble, a lot of people were congratulations, you know, congratulations to Rock, you know, for winning the title, even though he hasn't won it yet. Because everyone knew when Cena won the Rumble, it was clearly going to be Rock winning the title. Um, I I know I know it's a big draw, and it's you know the WWE is all about the money because I mean they should be because they're it's a company, but they, you know, they uh. They really don't leave much to the imagination when it comes to this match because I, I I know people are saying The Rock might work Extreme Rules and I mean he might but I I don't think do you really think if Cena beats The Rock at Mania like I personally think he will that they're gonna have the rematch the next pay per view or are they gonna hold it off till WrestleMania thirty for the rubber match? I I prefer just do it for the bigger one. Don't do it for the Extreme. Extreme just like you rematch it, but not for the, the big main event like Rock or the Cena or um. Yeah, I think those are all WrestleMania attractions. You know, I think Triple H is kind of becoming the like taker, you know, like that one match a year kind of guy. You know what I mean? He's gonna be doing the business in the back and coming out for when they WWE really needs him for maybe a big pay per view. Oh yeah, I totally understand, dude. Yeah, uh, Mark Henry, Mark Henry on Raw this past week uh, had that little face to face. With uh, Ryback, do you think that that's going to lead to anything? Maybe a one on one at WrestleMania? It looks like a two powerhouses. Now, I mentioned this a while back, and I'm not a big fan of powerhouses because I went to Mania at 20. Uh-huh. So it was Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. Of course, Austin was the referee. That match was fully botched to Mania because they can't do nothing with that match. You know what I'm saying? Are you talking about, uh, you, you, you said uh, Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg? Well, well, I think th- that match was a huge letdown for more than just that reason. Neither one of them really cared. They both were leaving the next night, you know. And um, Goldberg said himself that he would like to have another chance with him and and uh, you know face Lesnar one more time and and put on a good match because they 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 both didn't care. You know, Lesnar was going to go fail at football and Le- and uh, Goldberg went to go make some movies and some crappy show on Spike TV or something like that. But uh, um, neither one of them really cared about the match, but. On paper, the match sounded fantastic. Yeah, but if they have it next time, hopefully Austin would not be a part of like a special referee or nothing like that. I want Austin to be part of media, but that's not like that. The part of me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying. What about uh, Fon Dong Go? What do you think of oh him? Oh my gosh, I don't know if you pay attention. Yeah. I know, HD, that we just said you could actually get tickets. You know, like you could pre order tickets from that. So they stole that from the they stole that from the uh, AMC thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I think the funny thing about Fondango is, uh, isn't he the guy, I forget what his name was, wasn't he the guy from NXT that, you know, made videos about milk, like don't cry over spilt milk and things like that? Is that the guy? Well, isn't, I think that's him, ain't it? I don't know, I don't pay attention. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, Someone would have to check and make sure, but I think that's the guy where he would like pour milk down and he'd be like, I don't cry over spilt milk or however that went. I don't ask your, ask your viewers. I don't ask them. I, I'm yeah. Sure. yeah, if anyone knows if that was him, uh, leave a comment uh, and let me know because I, I'm not quite sure if that was him or not, but I think it's funny. Uh, the song's really catchy, you know? I, I don't like the idea of the character I, I, at first, but but it's just fun to say Fawn dong go you know what i mean and uh-huh. and and and, yeah. and, the, and the song he has is really catchy with the you know the cha-cha song and stuff and i like the fact that he comes out every week and he uh he is uh you know he teases the crowd and he's like oh no you gotta say my name right I, the only problem i have with this is that if when when he actually does have his first match that he doesn't let him down i, I hope it's not a letdown match I hope he don't stink the place up as long as I'm okay with everything they're doing about building up his first actual match, as long as it's not or a televised match it is. But uh, 
as long as it's not going to be some horrible, you know, five seconds, you know, match, he can't, as long as he can actually cut it in the ring when it counts, I think they're doing the right thing. Yeah, hopefully. I just hope he's not disappointed. And hopefully, if he is disappointed, then he just get rid of his ass. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I want a great performance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the WWE's uh, got uh, Brad Maddox doing the assistant to the assistant kind of thing right now. Uh, speaking yeah. of him, when he wrestled, I thought he was pretty awful. Awful? I, I, I thought he couldn't. I, he, I, he couldn't even sell bumps right for Ryback. Yeah. You know, when he came up for a clothesline, he turned the wrong direction. Everyone knows you got turned to the other way. He, he, he it was he just so many things that he did. Uh, he, I mean, you, if you can't even sell. Uh, a job, right? I think that you're, you know, you're pretty bad off when it comes to the company right now. But I do like his outside of, the, uh, of wrestling work. I like when he's referee. It's kind of funny how he's the most crooked referee since Earl Hebner at Survivor Series. You know, it's 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 the funniest stuff, and I like that. But and I liked his commentary because it was so ridiculous. But uh, but as far as in the ring goes, he's got a long ways to go. At least I think so. Yeah, you, I uh, totally agree with that. Good point. Yeah, very good point. Yeah. Uh, what uh? What else uh, would you like to talk about about Monday Night Raw as far as this past week? Yeah. Uh, the, um, the challenge with um, uh, Triple H to give up um, Brock. So that should be. Oh, good. Yeah. Do you think that Brock Lesnar is going to? Uh, do you think Brock Lesnar is going to do like the coward thing where he you know puts off every week? Oh, I'm not sure. Oh no, I don't think you want that match. And then eventually accepts it. Or do you think on Raw this week he's going to come out there and flat out accept the challenge? He's gonna accept it. Come on now, it's getting close. It's getting close to me now. He's gonna do it. Yeah, especially after that accidental, uh, accidental cut to the back of his head. What was it nineteen stitches or something? I mean, that's. Oh, that was that was awesome. Uh, yeah, he he, uh, he really he threw out. himself into that pole a little too hard, didn't he? That was that was insane. I don't know. Do you think somebody's got trouble for that? Oh, I, I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. Speaking of trouble, though, this this is this brings me to another point. Not this past RAW, but two weeks ago, that that pile driver. That CM Punk did to John Cena. If anyone a- answer me this, if that was anyone else but those two, wouldn't they have been fired, or at least, oh, yeah. or at least, or at least in in some way insanely penalized? They'd be like Alex Riley, where you just never see him anymore. Yeah, well, speaking of Alex Riley, where the hell is he? Is he still in the roster? I I think he's carrying Triple H's bags from arena to arena right now. Is that sad? <laughs> it really is because uh, he he kind of he kind of got a little bit of a push right when he broke away from the Miz too. Remember when they had to say it to my face and he had this whole new song and he had this hurricane looking lights and and he would come out there and and uh, he he'd actually beat the heck out of the Miz at first. Remember they made him look pretty dominant and then out of nowhere I don't know what happened to him but out of nowhere he just I think it was because of the things he was saying about John Cena. Because oh. remember, he did say all kinds of things. I don't know if it was on Twitter or shoot. I forget what it was because it's so long ago now. But he was saying all kinds of things about Cena and, and some other people. Uh, I forget the exact words. I'm sure someone could find it. But he was saying negative things about him. And ever since then, he has done nothing. So does that mean eventually he's going to get released and maybe TNA will pick him up down the road? I mean, if he gets released, there's no doubt that TNA will pick him up because they pick up anybody that's been in WWE that will go there, it seems like. But, uh... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think he's definitely gonna get released. He's he's gonna be one of the he's gonna be one of the yearly spring cleanings that they do. Yep. When is that? Is that before Mania or is it after Mania? That's that's a lot. Usually after. Usually after Mania. Uh, but uh, I thought Tensai was gonna be on that list too. But I think he's actually getting a good angle going with Bros. Click because they both got those weird looking tattoos on their arms and stuff, you know. And they they actually look good as a tag team. So I mean, I. I, I thought Tensai was going to get released, but uh, I think he actually might be around for a little bit longer. Yeah, but I'm not a big fan of him because they took him as a heel. Now he's a, uh, a, a, a face. What's the deal with him? You know, yeah. think about the heel and going to kick ass. You know, kick names, that, you that's know? the funny thing about the sport of pro wrestling. You can go from your your main event uh, match on Raw beating John Cena, by the way. To can't can't beat a person, you lose your manager that you beat up every week, and now he's just some good guy, and they and, they, and you know people still cheer Albert and A Train and stuff to him and stuff. It'd be funny if they get a shave your back chant going again. Oh God! <laughs> Would that be interesting if they did that? Oh man! Uh, and, and, yeah, I think they did that when he first uh, came back. I, mean, they, 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 I think they said it, didn't they? I don't think they said shave your back, but I know they said A Train and Albert and stuff. But uh. It's funny how they they talk about his writing on his face. Uh, a lot of people 
actually believe that he has a tattoo on his face. Though that's marker. They they use marker on his face. You know what huh? I mean? Yeah, just like uh, just like Umaga. Umaga didn't have a giant tattoo on his face. Uh, they 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 paint that on their faces. His his tattoos on his arms and stuff are all real, but those tattoos on his face is not real. Okay. And a lot of people think it is. I mean, it's kind of stupid how they go. He's like, oh, it might be a sushi menu. I mean, that was that was pretty that was pretty down for him. You know, he was not very happy, and uh, and they could make him do things like that. And uh, I don't know. They kind of turned him into a joke, honestly. But I, I even though he's a joke, he's a joke with another joke in. Uh, and Broda's Clay, so it kind of works together, you know, some comic relief for tonight. And I'd rather watch them as a tag team than watch Santino, so. Yeah. Um, but that's that's the way it is. The women's division in, in the WWE right now is pretty awful. Um, I think I think oh, everyone yeah. I can they agree with that. Them, um, uh, and um, um, Lita and um, Mickey James and all of them yeah. are pretty uh, rough, you know? Yeah, that's the. I think that's the strongest thing for TNA right now is the fact that they got a strong women's division. You know. Oh yeah, I um, I totally agree with that, dude. I totally agree. Yeah, the the, the women's division there and their tag. Well, the, the TNA used to have a phenomenal tag team division. You know, Beer Money was one of my favorite tag teams. Beer Money, Motor City Machine Guns. Do you remember? Uh, did you ever see that? Uh, Beer Money and Motor City Machine Guns best out of five uh, series every week they'd well, wrestle. I want- TV, but it was a great feud, of course. Yeah, it was. Uh, what happened to the uh, more machine guns? They broke up? Uh, well, uh, one got injured and one got released. Okay. Uh, and oh, I, the, guy, the, the guy got released. Is he going to WWE or no? There was talk about it, and I honestly don't know what happened there. But okay. I do I do know that he's not there, so uh, whatever okay. happened, happened. I'm not quite sure. Okay. Uh, another uh, another news that happened this week. Uh, El Generico debuted in NXT. I don't watch NXT, so I can't really um, tell you. <laughs> well, I'll talk a little bit about it real quick for people that okay. know. El Generico uh, was a max a masked wrestler, and guess what WWE did with him? Go ahead, give me one guess. They, I'll, I'll just tell you, they unmasked him and gave him generic uh, wrestling gear. Wow. Yeah. So talk about talk about ironic, isn't it? He goes from being El Generico to a generic wrestler. Jesus. But uh, I can't hate too much on WWE's uh, system for bringing in new talent because they've done a good job this year. Triple H brought in the Shield, uh, three guys that work really well together. Uh, Biggie Langston, for what it's worth, he's you know doing something, you know, uh, and he was NXT champ. I don't know if he still is or not, but. Uh, those those things. When you think, in, speaking of Biggie Langston, when is he going to actually have a match on Raw? I don't know. Maybe I'm guessing. Maybe after Mania, make more sense because right now everybody's getting hyped up for Mania around the corner. Is you he know? is he trying to take a page from John Cena and wear wrestling gear all the time for no reason? I don't know. Yeah, he's wearing wrestling gear for no reason. He always he wears wrestling gear every week, all the time, for no reason. Oh man! I don't know. It still makes no sense. He's like a bodyguard of, like, it reminds me of when Diesel used to do back in the day. He didn't say a word until he said actually say a word. And yeah, he to, um, I remember that. Line, you know? Yeah, I remember that. But it's fun. It's funny to me that uh, that Cena, John Cena, wears wrestling gear. Have you ever seen video, uh, video or photos of him like at the at the airport in wrestling gear? It's, it's kind of, he's the one guy, I've never seen anyone, re- can you imagine if everyone else, can you imagine The Rock ro- rolling through the uh, the airport in his wrestling gear? Um, <laughs> I mean, I, the, Cena's the only guy that I know that actually goes, uh, ra- wears his wrestling gear everywhere he goes. And uh, I, w- I wonder what the deal is with that. Is he, is he just really trying to sell his merch? Probably. <laughs> uh, he might be, I'm not sure, but... Uh, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the topic that I've really been wanting to talk about. Undertaker uh, versus Punk. What are the odds of Punk breaking the streak? Well, I say uh, 2% because we've been talking about this, not you, but every time when Taker go my there, is this Will Sheik going to snap? No, it's not going to happen. He's going to go undefeated, and that's it. You know, that's the bottom line because Team R. Ryan said so. Yeah, I, I don't see this. Here's the reason I don't see the streak ending, okay? Uh, it's the biggest draw of the year, every year. No doubt about it. Everyone, from, from November, October, November, before before Royal Rumble even gets there, they're talking, 
Who is Taker going to face? Is he going to wrestle this year? Uh, you know, those kind of questions get people talking about WrestleMania. So even if this is la- Taker's last year, we won't know until next Mania comes because the, the, the questions and the rumors fly and fly, you know. But if the streak ends, we know that's Taker's last Mania match. Yep. And they would never they would never take away the possibility of a Taker WrestleMania match like that uh, out of our minds and out of our thoughts. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, so that reason, and besides the fact that he he puts on the best matches of the year, like it or not, it's a one match a year thing, but the, the match is great. And yeah. for a guy that's been beat up as much as he has to, to be out there for 45 minutes, uh, one time a year or not, I personally think he earned the right to be out there one time a year. He, he's been in the company since, what, 1990, and he's never left, he's never jumped ship, he's never been, and he's been a WWE guy ever since he walked in the door, and I think that that by itself and his loyalty and never leaving, he never went to do anything else. That by itself earns him the right to wrestle when he wants at his age. Yeah, but he never went to uh, ECW, never went to WCW. Actually, he did want to WCW. Oh, yeah, he was mean Mark Calloway in WCW, but once he came to WWE, he was never any, He was a WWE guy for life. Yep, he never went to TNA, nothing, you know? He, yeah. He's a Ford, he's a um, WF, actually, Bastomania. He went to WWE for life, you know? Yeah, we, the, the funny thing is, uh, Undertaker down the road. Do you see him being the kind of guy to do autograph signings at places kind of like Shawn Michaels and Stone, all these other retired guys, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold, uh, you know, people that have retired over the past few years, Mick Foley. Uh, do you see Undertaker going around doing autograph signings at maybe a car shows and stuff like that? Yeah, hopefully because I'd love to see him. And, you know, I, I, I saw him before. Yeah. I would like to get his autograph. Yeah, I don't mark out like that. Uh, isn't he, I mean, to me, isn't he the hardest autograph to get, though? I mean, you can get it on eBay, but that's not, um, I mean, it's real, but I won't get it personally. Yeah, yeah, he's done, he's done personal signatures like that, but isn't he, like, the hardest guy to actually meet and get an autograph with? Probably, but... I think he'd be harder to meet than anybody else. I know he used to go on Mania this year. I know, like, Stan Breach, and all of them, not Stan Breach. Um, I know, um, Tom Barry's going, but of course you got paid, um, extra money to meet those people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I know, uh... A lot of years, he don't do the Undertaker, uh, you know, the signings, uh, even at WrestleMania that often, you know? Well, I think, from my opinion, I think he should do that once in a while. I know yeah. he's doing he do this year, for sure he is doing it. Yeah, I, uh, I think that, I think that Undertaker's probably the autograph to have because I think it's by far. I mean, people might say The Rock's autograph's hard to get, and, and in a way it is, and, uh, I've only got one autograph from The Rock, and it was a long time ago, but, uh, the The Rock does media for I mean he, outside of wrestling he does media for movies all the time, oh, he, yeah. and, and and yeah it might be hard for a particular person to meet him but he's around all the time he's out at David Letterman all these places and he's doing autographs at these places you know what I mean and I I think that Taker Taker's not out doing autographs anywhere. I mean, he does personal signings for P- PPW and stuff for eBay, and, and uh, he signs like 100 pictures and stuff like that. And you can get the WrestleMania plaques every year, which, by the way, those are my favorite plaques, the WrestleMania Undertaker Street plaques. Yeah, I can't find them. I mean, I can find them, but they're so darn expensive. eBay, I, every shop, yeah. everywhere. I can't get a good deal, you know? Yeah, I always, I hunt. After WrestleMania's over, I check WWE.com, WWEshop.com every single day for the media plaques. And I, I I check the media and autograph collectors area every single day because I got to make sure I get them while they're hundred bucks. If you wait, you go to eBay later. They're gonna be five, six, seven hundred dollars. Yeah, but you know, WWE shop is too expensive. I can't get a good deal. They they they're too expensive. Yeah, but they they're still a hundred dollars. But I'd rather pay a hundred dollars for Undertaker plaque than pay five later. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's the way it is. Uh. Like Undertaker, you can't find Undertaker autographs on figures or nothing, really. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so that in my opinion, I think he's the hardest autograph to get. Yeah, you, you're totally right. Yeah. Um. Uh. What, what is there anything else you'd like to discuss? Yeah, let's discuss some um some basketball. I know you're a huge Miami Heat fan. So, what's your thoughts on this um on this season, sixteen zero? Oh well, this season. Oh, no, the, sorry, um, sixteen winning streak. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, well the the Heat to me are the team to beat, and I know you're a Bulls fan, and I hope Derrick Rose comes back for you soon because you guys sure do need him. Uh, yeah. But uh, in my opinion, 
the uh, Miami Heat are the team to beat. I, I think if the any if any team if uh, if the Heat does not win a championship and repeat this year, it's a it's a it's a giant disappointment. Yeah, but I told everyone before, it does not matter if you're the best or the one through the playoffs. It, it's like a second season, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I completely agree. But the Heat, I think, are going to step their game up even more in the playoffs. No, we'll we'll find out. You know, they kind of yeah. struggle. Against the Pacers, and I don't know who's going to compete with them in the playoffs. I don't think it's beat the Bulls because Bulls. Don't well, if it's up. Heat versus OKC, I I say Heat win maybe four straight even. That's how confident I am. Oh, you think it'd be a, four, a sweep, huh? I I if it's if it's Heat versus OKC, I think it'd be a sweep this year. Because they only won one last year, and they have they have less talent this year without James Harden. Yeah, that's not stupid. I don't think I don't want to get rid of them, but whatever. yeah, I don't either. But as far as if the Spurs get to the playoffs and they, and they make it all the way to the championship and they face the Heat, I think that they would be the only legitimate threat for the Miami Heat. Yeah, they, they're no, completely it, different. It, they're slower. The Heat, the Heat play that you know the fast, the the fast pick and roll play. Uh, the Spurs, they're slower. They're older, but they are good. They're they're as good as it gets today, and. I think that they are the only legitimate threat. If if they face anyone besides the Spurs, they win, guaranteed. That's Do you think Boston will make the playoffs? Uh, they might make the playoffs, but they're not going to make it very far. Yeah, they will get probably get a knockout first round. And you yeah. got no one in the East is very dominant like you are. And I think James is. I can't say Hall of Famer right now because it's a long way from now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the thing is. People compare him to Jordan, and I've talked about this before. Jordan, LeBron James is in the prime of his career. He's going to be in the for the next two years. He's the man at least. He's going to be the in the prime of his career for the next two or three years. He's not. I mean, he's he's what twenty eight now. When, when he's early thirties, he's still going to be great. He's getting better. I think he'll be better the next year. Every year, he's going to get better and better and better for the next few years, and. You can't compare someone when they're just getting good, or not getting good, but just getting to their potential, to someone that has been done, you know, for the last twelve years. Um, I think that that when it's all said and done, Kobe, Jordan, LeBron, when it's all said 